Oh, well, hello, ladies and gentlemans. Uh, let's hammer out this uh, this breakdown. We're looking 825 um, versus Quebec. And let me preface by saying this is my, at this point in time, this is the third time that I've faced this team. Um, the first one, I, hey, that's me. The first one uh, was on the road. That was my first outing with the new team. It went well. Second one was brutal. I think I showed you guys that one. Um, second one was brutal. And then now this is the third one. And just to give you kind of some some context and some preview for what's to come, a um, couple things. One, this is uh, this is like probably the biggest outing for me all year in terms of like, you know, discovering a lot of different things uh, about myself and what I needed to do to move forward. Um, and two, this is the most pitches I've ever thrown in a single professional start. So that's freaking dope. So no outing is ever off to a good start when you give up a first pitch of the game uh, knock. And um, the reason I say that is because it's just one of those things that's like frustrating. You're kind of just sitting there like, really? And then second pitch of the game, a stolen bag. That was a good freaking throw, honestly. So now we got a guy in uh, a guy on second scoring position within three pitches of the game. So now facing this lefty, I'm trying to get a punchy. And um, instead of doing that, he does his job. Or, yeah, he did his job, right? He got him over. So now guy on third, uh, one out. And I love facing this dude. This is uh, Para. He's the guy that hit me probably the ball just landed like last week. <laughs> hit that 3-0 moonshot off me. It was dope. Um, but uh, this is another one of those kind of at-bats. I really don't like this camera angle, so I won't spend too much time on it. But just to show you a few things sticking out on the scoreboard, right? So 0-2, one out, guy on third, less than two outs, and you have your three-hole hitter up, best, you know, arguably the best hitter on the in the lineup. 0-2, we're trying to go fastball elevated here, um, up and in, and this isn't anyone's fault in particular with like, you know, G, my catcher or myself. Uh, I mean, actually, it is my fault. But in a situation like this, throwing an 0-2 fastball elevated with a guy on third less than two outs isn't probably the smartest idea, even though that could be, you know, a very valuable pitch for me in my repertoire. You know, that's going to be a pitch that if they make contact, it's going to go in the air and potentially, um, you know, score that run, which I'm not trying to allow that to happen. But um, worst case scenario... <laughs> They uh, make an O2 pitch um, up in the zone, and we're trying to go like up and in, probably set off, set up that slider. So just to show you where this pitch is, we do a job in terms of like the pitch location. So you can like see just by the glove and the stick, like the pitch was up, pitch was in, but here we go, you know. And it's it's uh it's tricky it's tricky because then you could also make that same kind of argument for like oh well you don't want to really throw like, like that breaking ball in the dirt and force you know the catcher to block it in, in in effort to you know maybe there's a pass ball or whatever or a wild pitch so this one was tricky because i remember in the moment thinking like wait a second what dude because that could have been our, our double play did i rewind too much holy smokes i never really truly understand the works of this timeline thing so they say this 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 pitch uh or that fouled off his foot they say this fouled off his foot and it didn't right <laughs> it didn't i mean i'm sitting here this is actually the first time I've, I've watched this in detail so there's the ball so this is weird right because then the ball goes like foul or no, does it not go foul? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments because I can't obviously see it that well. Um, but they said this nonetheless fouled off his foot. But, you know, that could have been our Indian ending, uh, Indian ending double play is what it is. Ooh, got an out call there. So foul ball nonetheless. Let's kind of move this thing forward and see what we got cooking here after this. Already kind of a upsetting first inning, right? <laughs> So then uh, go 2-1, one, 
two two pretty good uh, cutter there, and then we get the ground ball. And um, again, it's it's a it's a tough one. It's, it's a tough thing because like Marcus isn't really used to playing first base. Like he's been our DH, and then he gets this uh, this freaking piss rod hit. All, I don't even know how hard this ball's hit. Yeah, it's that's a tricky hop. <laughs> and then it was you kind of see like, oh well, am I am I gonna try to get the ball? You know, am I a figure skater? Uh, okay, I got to cover first. Ah! So that's uh, that's unfortunate with one out, and uh, you just got to keep moving on. Obviously, you know, not to make any excuses. And then this is where we really got to start to like grind. And again, as a starting pitcher, the last thing you want to do is really have to truly grind in the first inning of an outing. Um, that could have been bad, right? I don't like this camera angle. Well, we're gonna grind through it, boys. All right, foul ball there. Let's see what we got cooking here. Three two, big punchy on the three two slider. Let's yeah. Now we're moved back. Now we're freaking cooking. All right, so now we can do this with the strike zone. Knees. Is that where they put the strike zone? I don't know. I I did it the last time we did a breakdown. I didn't know I could, but now we're cooking. So fastball in. According to my strike zone, that's a strike. <laughs> So why don't they just go by this strike zone? Uh, oh, well. Um, there's an undo button. There we go. All right. So we're 1-0. We're make a pitch. 2-0. Got to make a pitch. 2-0 cutter. Like it. 2-1 cutter. Like it. 2-2 slider. Like it. But here's – this is, a, again, I overthink a lot, but – this is also where you can kind of fall into this pattern of like, okay, well, I've thrown this guy very, very similar looks back to back to back to back. Like, at what point do I go, oh, well, he's not showing me that he can hit it. And then at what point do I go, all right, well, he's seen it so much, like he's going to adjust, right? Because it's always tricky when you face the lineup for the first time. Uh, as, as a starter, you know, you don't want to give them too much credit. You want to stick to your guns. You want to stick to your, like, your strengths. But there is something to be said you know, you throw three, four, five pitches in a row, similar spot, similar pitch, uh, and they just keep fouling it off. Like, although they don't show you that they're going to barrel that ball, you know, they get comfortable with it. So then we go fastball up. So I really like that sequence um, in terms of just like what I said before, right? So you're giving this guy very similar looks um, over and over again, whether it be a cutter, whether it be a slider. Uh, started at 2-0. So then we go boom, cutter down here. And then 2-1, we go boom, cutter in here. And then 2-2, we go slider right there. And then boom, right up with the heater. So uh, that's probably one of the better sequences of the game. Uh, obviously, we'll we'll take a look together and see if there's any other ones. But um, in terms of the sequence and the particular situation that I was in, uh, grinding through that inning, fall behind 2-0, and then come back with that, that's big. Uh, pretty good momentum shift there. So... Let's keep playing it forward. Let's draw another strike zone. I try to start it like at the knee, try to give a pretty good visual. I mean, it's not that small, is it? Knee to belt? I don't know. Just for this sake, we're just going to do that. All right. I don't know, man. All right, let's go. Shown bunt. That a boy. Here we go. 0 1. Pretty good pitch. We get a call, huh? All right, now that's uh, that's I need to get better at that, and uh, I did I think throughout the after these games again this was eight twenty five and then eight twenty five on I think I strung together a few good outings, and this is another one of those things why I said in the beginning this was a big outing for me because I took a lot away from it, um, and this is another one of those things. Okay, so O two whoa hey man easy, okay now we just cleared the K zone self imploding, yeah. I know that's bad. All right, so O2, it's uh, one of those fine lines where you're like, all right, well, I know I don't want to give up an O2 hit, right? I know I don't want to give him an O2 hit. So, so, throw, so, whoa. so throw something that we know that he can't hit. Boom, and we go way off the plate. Not very competitive, right? I think I'm at my best when I'm just continuously on the gas pedal, even O2 attacking, because even if I give up O2, like at least I can look back and be like, okay, I was aggressive, right? That's the biggest thing for me is like stay aggressive. All right, so then we go one, two, another one of those moments, man, where you get one, two, and uh, knowing that, like, I want that heater up, that's a pretty good pitch for me, you know, speaking from data analytics standpoint. Uh, so we throw it here. It's not that elevated. It's uh, maybe the upper part of the zone, but my argument would be that it's all, you know, out here. And if we go back 
to this setup, if we saw where G was setting up, we're trying to go in, right? We're trying to go in, whether it be up, middle, down, doesn't matter. We're just trying to go in because everything from previous pitches in this at bats set that up, right? So if we even look at like the 01 pitch here, boom, you got to see like we we got this pitch, right? Like that's a tough freaking, that's a tough pitch to get if you're a hitter. So you're like, oh, well, shoot, now I got to respect this part of the plate. And now I'm going to probably start diving, right? You can even see it, even though I know I mentioned before with the O2, um, not liking this O2 pitch, you can see like he's still, all right, we're leaning out this way. So the right pitch is what we called, in my opinion. You know, let's let's throw a fastball because I believe the fastball doesn't even have to be here. It could still be here in this area and it's still going to be perceived as inner third to him just because of how we've sequenced up into that point. So the right call, but not the right execution. And he wants to get his hands extended. Most guys, you know, five, four, five, six guys in the lineup are, are going to be guys that probably, you know, want to get their hands extended. Um, so now we're back at it, guys. We're back at it in the second inning with a guy in scoring position, no outs. And uh, he does his job, gets him over. Pretty good pitches there after falling behind 3-0. Good PFP, turn and look. Um, and this is my boy Gift. Always have fun facing him. Oh, fudge. You got to draw a different square for Gift. All right, so let's go back to this OO pitch. Boom. So we're here. All right. Now we're 1 0. Guy on third. Again, we're going for that strikeout, right? So then we throw that slider here. So we're 1 1. And um, then we go slider up in the zone. I actually missed my spot, but he sees it up where the other ones are down. That's a changing eye level kind of sequencing there, and unintentional, if we will. And this is another one of those moments where, like, I think in the moment, one, two, after having thrown three different breaking balls, it's like, okay, well, we can throw the, the heater up here. Um, but it's the, kind of the same thing. We throw a very uncompetitive one, two pitch, get back two, two, try to, if that pitch was, if that two, two slider right there was thrown one, two, I think we're cooking, but now we're three, two, and let's see what we do here. We throw that slider, get him to ground ball, but it's through. That's the game. I think I threw him all sliders, all cutters. Yeah. All right. Ah, hate it. Let's uh let's just keep going here. A couple good pitches. This is our leadoff hitter. Good hitter, man. Puts together some good ABs, cutting fastballs off, not holding runners, getting all sporadic. 3-2 cutter. Get the ground out, two outs. Those pitches at the bottom of the zone are tricky, man. Okay. All right, so now we're out of it, and I think in this inning is where we're going to start really picking it up. All right, I think, you know, I'm a, I hate to say this because it's kind of perceived as soft, but like I just, once I get in that rhythm, you know, once I get in that rhythm and establish that tempo, like now we're, now it's just everything kind of comes easy and I could stop actively engaging thought. And, um, and it's hard for me when, I am like grinding and I'm battling because I think about like I have to defeat this team mentally <laughs> instead of just being in flow and just like letting things go. That rhymed. Okay, so top third, 3-2. Tough A-B here because I remember this, dude. Like this is the third inning. I remember coming in in the second. I was like, all right, we're going to start throwing that change up. Gee, we're going to start throwing that change up. All right, if you guys follow, followed me for a while, you know that I don't have the best of change ups but it freaking plays. So change up there, foul ball. And he, I come over here in this area and he looks at me, he's like, that's a good pitch. And I was like, one, two. I was like, yeah, let's go, dude. Now I got a little feel for that. Here we go. And then I just try to, try to be too fine. Just typical stuff that, that I deal with every single day of my life. Try to be a perfectionist. Um, well, I am a perfectionist, but I try to be a perfectionist, but I didn't go back to that pitch. And that's frustrating. So there's the change up, oh, oh kind of feeling myself another change up oh oh don't get the call now we go cutter that's a pretty good sequence and i learned that later in the year 
was uh, kind of always looked at it like, okay, we can double up the change up, but then after that double up, like we got to go heater. I kind of like the the double up change up into a cutter. Hey, nice little athletic little pick there. I left that in on the clippage. And now we're just kind of starting to overthrow and I'm sitting here thinking like, wait a second, I'm starting to get into a little groove and now we got a guy in scoring position again. Credit to this team. And then, you know, game of inches, ball down the line. I thought that was foul at the time. Um, but instead of foul, it's a it's a triple. So it's funny, right? Because we get after this inning and it's uh four nothing. And you're like, wait, why was this one of the, your why was this one of your better starts? Well, because I finally in this inning on got into this groove and um, you kind of get into this mentality as a pitcher. Uh, another tough play for Marcus, dude. You get into this mentality as a pitcher where like, you know, the score isn't, uh, isn't to your favor. And then you can finally just be like, F it. Right. And we all talk about that F it mentality, but it's like, okay, well, how do you put that into practice? Like, it's not easy to do. And I've done this in the past. That's a good sack fly, dude. Uh, I've done this in the past where it's like, all right, well, like this outing's already kind of compromised. Like now we're just going to freaking go out there and just like let the cards fall where they may. And uh, whereas before, you know, it's, I'm, I'm so up here, but this is, this is the reason why I say I liked this outing so much. A little change up there. Oh, oh, I'm babe. This is why I like this outing so much because I, I, I started, obviously I've learned it multiple times throughout my career, but it's the application of it, right? Like you can learn things, but like, are you going to apply them moving forward? So I felt like I was, I was trying to be so in control, you know, early stages and trying to be, you know, perfect early stages, you know, the first, first inning, second inning. And then after this outing, and I realized later in these innings here that I was like, wow, I don't have to like be super, um, active here and, um, put so much of this internal pressure on myself to make these perfect pitches, especially in jams. I could just like go out there and throw. And, um, I remember when I was in, in camp with St. Louis in 2017, I was in Mike Leake's group and he brought up, Hey, change up. I'm babe. And he brought up this really good point where, he, you know, he was like, Hey, I like saw your bullpen or whatever. And then he saw one of my outings. Um, and he was like, your bullpen was fantastic and your outing sucked. You're like, why is that? I'm like, Oh, you know, there's a hitter when you, when you're in an outing, there's no hitter in the bullpen. He's like, well, what changes? Like, why, why, why should anything change? And I was like, whoa, <laughs> right? Whoa. And so now as I'm getting older, all these things that I've heard, you know, growing up kind of start making sense. Um, big pitch there. You see, you guys saw that last AB, right? Like you start to catch a groove and then you get a jam job single and it's like, that's the game, dude. <laughs> Sometimes you get, you start catching a groove by a guy freaking laser in a ball right at somebody. But um, is what it is. So two cutters, or uh, I miss. I remember recording this, and something happened to where like I missed the first few pitches to that at bat, and ended up striking him out. It was a, it was a decent sequence, but um, I really like that two pitch. Gosh, I, if I were, if I had more time, I'd do an overlay because this, this right here is an O O changeup. No, sorry, 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 sorry. Let's get back to that O O. All right, so this is that. Uh, Oh, oh, change up. No, oh, oh, fastball. Sorry. Okay. Let's get back to that. Okay. So we're oh, oh. We go fastball, cheddar cheese, boom, nailed, strike. And we go change up in that same, in that same tunnel. It's a really good take, right? So I don't know. And then we go slider, boom. So we've shown three different looks up until this point. And then what do we do? Of course, I'm going to go, hey, cheddar Bob upstairs. And he's going to freaking tattoo it to center. And this is the game. This is the beautiful game that we play. Sometimes you give up a seed and then, you know, goes at somebody. And then GIF obviously uh, ruins my uh, my outing. Or doesn't ruin it, but he <laughs> he uh, gets me out of the ball game by uh, sitting on a freaking oh, oh, curveball or whatever it was. Um, so, love you, GIF. There's uh, a lot to take away for me personally in outings like this. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning, but, uh, I think the reason again, just to 
kind of echo these thoughts. Like the reason why I thought this outing like changed the 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 season for me uh, later on was because I was able to then just get into a state of like, all right. I've showcased, you know, the stuff is good. My results suck, but I've showcased that my stuff is good enough to not have to worry so much about the perfect sequencing and the perfect pitch execution and, you know, the perfect, uh, or the, the fooling of the hitter in a, in a certain count throwing an unpredictable pitch. And then I saw that it mattered. I saw that it, it, it played, if you will. And after this outing, I took that approach like, okay, F it. Like, here's my stuff. Here's what I got early stages. I'm going to attack middle, middle. And then what you start seeing in these moments as a pitcher is like the shift is only in the mind and in in your mental approach. And when you have that shift in the mental approach, you, you start instilling this sense of freedom of like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to attack middle of the plate. That sounds like a terrible idea. But then what you start realizing is like when you're free and you're doing that, your stuff plays way better. Whereas like for me, again, you're trying to make these perfect pitches. You're trying to like, you know, sequence uh, in such a way that's surprising or whatever you you have. Um, And it kind of promotes this restricted type way of 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 throwing. Um, And that's that's not when I'm at my best. Again, something that I've already knew known at that point but it's like the application and sometimes you have moments in your career where you apply it but then you lose it and then you got to kind of relearn it and then you got to reapply it and that's that's the the beauty of it right so uh 825 i think uh this was was one of the better outings for me not statistically speaking obviously but um for me moving forward uh, as a starting pitcher so uh, can't wait to do the next breakdown in which I, I don't suck. But big day here for the, uh, for the changeup and um, understanding, I think, where my stuff plays the best and, and how to sequence that. Um, there's a lot to be said, too, about, you know, the fastball elevated and how you, I've I kind of got into this approach where I thought, like, okay, if I'm going to throw a fastball, it's got to be elevated because of my data and all this stuff. And then I think after this outing, I was like, okay, well, I still need to attack the bottom quadrant, right? Like, I still need to throw the, the fastball at the bottom of the zone. And I think there's a lot of things here, throwing fastballs in, that I learned in this particular outing that I applied, you know, in the next few outings to come and until the end of the year that, that really benefited me and even benefited me going into winter ball here in a couple of weeks. So hope you guys enjoyed Uh, As always, God bless. Much love. Until next time, talk to you later.